So this is the age old question. Yep. Very, <laughs> I know you probably already know. What what's your what your your go to camera like manufacturer company? Like what who who do you think is the top? I mean, it's very highly debated. Yeah. What's, what's your your top? tried and true? I think. What the heck? That's super random. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, go ahead and introduce yourself, like what you do. Cool. And we can just kind of take our conversation from there. All right. So my name is John Weatherby. I am a travel and landscape photographer. I travel and take photos. Uh, that's kind of my goal, at least to do most of the time. I teach workshops all around the world and have online courses and an editing plugin as well for Photoshop. So. It's kind of my business model now. My career's looked a lot different over the years, but um, kind of content where I'm at right now with the travel and landscape stuff. Nice. Very cool. Um, so what, I mean, I, I know a little bit of your background just from what you share on social media and stuff, but like what, what did you do before photography and like what brought you into doing that as your career? Yeah, so I was I, I picked up photography in my last semester of college. So I was studying advertising and public relations, and I was working at a restaurant, and I had a little side hustle where I would uh, basically take pictures of sushi and post them on their Instagram, the company's Instagram, nice. in exchange to get the eat the food afterwards. So, <laughs> free sushi. Yeah, it's great <laughs> for a college kid. Yeah. Nice arrangement, but uh, basically a guy came in one time to take photos of the menu, and the photos that he took blew my phone pictures out of the water, and okay. that's when I realized that I needed to get better gear. I, th I thought you were going to say the opposite, that that the pictures sucked, and you're like, I can, I can do them better. <laughs> well, I mean, I think I could do better now <laughs> yeah. than he could do, because yeah, yeah. I'm not, yeah, I mean, that guy, is, that's a whole other story. But you're not a, a sushi podcast. photographer now, man. <laughs> I am not, no, but I did start off doing a lot of, you food. know, food pictures, okay. lifestyle shots, commercial work around Tampa, um, you know, photos for ads. Nice. Yeah, a lot of different stuff. So you, do you live in Tampa now or like where, I no, mean, I, I'm just I know visiting. you travel. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, right now I'm, I'm still traveling full time, so I don't really have a home base per se. I've been renting a place in New York last okay. year for uh, about six months out of the year last year. I was staying in an apartment in New York City. Nice. So I'm kind of like part-time in the van, part-time in Iceland, it feels like, and then yeah. part-time in New York City. Nice. Yeah. What, um, why, yeah, why New York? Like in the U.S., obviously, why Why so, are you there? So I often? love cityscapes. That's where I started photographing actually before landscapes. Okay. And New York, to me, is like the mecca of cityscapes. The skyline is the best yeah. in the world, in my opinion. Um, but a lot of, you know, very rich architecture, historical stuff, and um, it's also a really great contrast to van life. So when you're in the van, you're in the middle of nowhere, you're not surrounded by people, you have, you know, less access to gyms and stores and all this stuff, and then in New York, it's the complete opposite. It's like people everywhere. You got, you know, every store you can imagine just a block yeah. away yeah, yeah. from wherever you're staying, so. It's the uh, opposite of inconvenience. It's just like everything is at your disposal. Yeah. It's a good break. Yeah, so you grew up in Florida, and did you start your career doing photography in Florida? Or like where, I mean, obviously you had to at some point, but like where did that go from there? Like, yeah. Yeah, I mean, so I started, you know, taking shots around Tampa. Um, sushi turned into, you know, taking people's headshots and photos of the skyline and all kinds of stuff, uh, basically, Social media allowed me to connect with a lot of people and businesses in Tampa that needed photography work. So um, I attribute, you know, kind of kicked starting my career through social media. Okay. But yeah, I started off in Tampa and then basically I started doing um, trips where I would, you know, take photos of different you know, cities and the skylines there and then eventually turn it into landscapes as well. But, nice. you know, it was like make make money with commercial photography and then see how far I could stretch it with the travel stuff until I figured out how to, you know, kind of just make money while traveling. So did you did you do photography? Um, like, because I, I know that everybody obviously has people in the photography world. They have a different journey of how they, I mean, some people jump into it and kind of like, abandon everything and like if I if this doesn't work then I 
I'm going to be broke and I become a, yeah. home, a hobo or whatever. <laughs> right. I mean, some people have like a side hustle doing photography mm -hmm. until they're kind of built up enough doing yep. that. And then they kind of transition over to doing that full time. Like, how did that journey look for you? Yeah, so I was finishing school when I just started kind of doing photos for work. And still I was waiting tables at the restaurant. And a mentor of mine actually told me to just keep working as a waiter and take on photo shoots until I got busy enough with that to where I could walk away from waiting tables and just do it full time. Um, I really am grateful for this guy who you know, gave me that advice because he was very entrepreneurial and you know, he, the way he put it was don't become a corporate sheep and yeah. uh, you know, get stuck at a desk nine to five, Monday through Friday. And you know, I actually did an internship and, and realized uh, as definitely not what I wanted to do. Yeah. So I stuck with it until I got busy enough. And birds. then I was able to um, take the jump and do photography full time. Let's check out the bird. <laughs> Little moorhead. Um, that's cool. So, so it was so kind it was a of, little kind more of calculated. A, a gradual, yeah. like, yeah. yeah, you weren't. But I did take a lot of risks. Yeah, of course. Once yeah. I did start doing photography full time, um, a lot of, a lot of betting on myself and yeah, kind of going after, you know, different areas in the photography business space. Yeah. Did you always know that like landscape and like cityscape type photography was was your thing that no. you, or are we kind of like testing different ones and you just kind of settled on that that that's what did the best for you or yeah well um I, I went to iceland i mean i always loved cityscapes and i would do photos of the skylines and stuff around different cities but you know like i was doing commercial yeah. photography so i was doing architecture work and headshots and you see um, that sorry i don't mean to cut you off no, you see the great blue heron right there his, yeah. his head peeking out it's cool beautiful yeah um the landscape stuff didn't start until I went to Iceland for my first time in 2017. Okay. And then I really shifted gears and fell in love with landscape stuff. So I didn't always want to do landscapes and cityscapes, but yeah. I realized that, you know, I enjoy photographing them and I enjoy traveling. So they kind of just go hand in hand. In hand. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So. Um, I know you're, for people that follow you, more than likely are aware of your your van the uh the weather beast yeah. what um how, how did that like i know that you bought it's a mercedes right yes yeah it's a four sprinter four. yeah mm -hmm. and uh and then you renovated that and you've kind of you for a period you lived in it full time and uh so yeah talk about like that and sure. kind of like the journey of that because i know it's super interesting yeah so i i got introduced to van life um by a buddy of mine who actually wound up building the van for me okay he started a company that did conversions eventually years after we met but basically he was uh inspiration kind of a mentor to me as well he's an entrepreneur he had a business in miami sold everything built a van and just like hit the road in it and went from living in like condos in downtown and like driving a Maserati to like living in nature in a van. <laughs> so That's cool. Yeah, so I did a trip with him one time, I think it was in 2017 or 2018, and I realized that the van life was just amazing for photography and you know, being able to get out and have a super flexible travel itinerary and yeah. kind of just kind of go where you want on a whim where the weather takes you and stuff. So Yeah, you're not really tied down somewhere yeah. you, you kind of not locked into any specific you know hotels or itinerary or anything so yeah yeah i um i started to have kind of find my footing i would say in around 2020 early 2020 i filmed and launched my first online course yeah and i really started to actually you know i i feel like move out of the starving struggling artist realm and then you know i, I started looking for a van i bought the van and then um, eventually wound up having my friend's company actually convert it professionally. So grateful that that worked out because it would have not been nearly as nice <laughs> as if I had done it. So, yeah. Did, yeah. um, what, so what's your favorite like feature in your, your van? Like, I, mean, I guess top, the, top three, cause I know there's a yeah. bunch. Well, I, I just love the four by four capabilities of it, to be honest. I okay. mean, just being able to, you know, take it where most vans can't go yeah you know i've done a i've done a upgraded suspension and an extra lift on it and you know i have 34 inch tires so like it's uh it's able to go you know 
places most SUVs only yeah. could take you. So yeah, yeah, that's my favorite feature. I would say. I mean, other than that, maybe my memory foam mattress. <laughs> <laughs> my bed's pretty comfortable. Yeah, yeah, that's important. Yeah. Where you sleep is is important. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, so you are currently like what do you have any big projects that are coming up here next i mean are mm. stuff that you can talk about at yeah least? of course uh well i have a lot of workshops coming up okay. soon so i i've kind of not even intentionally just found myself selling a bunch of workshops out and a lot of them are in, are in iceland so um, you know, it's one of my favorite things to do is to teach people photography in Iceland and like, yeah. one of the be most beautiful places in the world, in my opinion. Yeah, I, so, would, I would agree. Yeah. Yeah, I have I have those coming up and some, you know, jobs kind of lined up with companies over there and uh, the um, you know, online courses and my plugin as well. I'm going to be launching some new plugins and some um, services around centered around the plugin as well and the courses like an online community. Yeah. Yeah. So talk, yeah, talk about the plugin because okay. like people might not know exactly what yeah. that even means. And so, I became I would say like very proficient in Photoshop through the commercial photography stuff I did, learning how to do composites and retouching and like a lot of stuff that I wound up translating into landscapes and cityscapes. And something that I've found through teaching photography is that Photoshop is very intimidating for people. Yeah. <laughs> hard to understand, hard to learn. A lot of people will just kind of give up on it and just stick to Lightroom. So I worked with a developer and created a plugin basically to help edit in Photoshop easier. Nice. Yeah. So it's you know it's it's made for people who don't necessarily understand Photoshop. Yeah. Well, and they want to use the program and unlock you know the next level of possibilities with editing and um, yeah, it helps. I, in my opinion, helps. People create more polished, professional-looking edits. Would that's stream, awesome. And streamlines the process. Yeah, hopefully that's in the camera. <laughs> <laughs> I know I don't know if they got it or not, but probably. The um, yeah, like they're coming back. Let's see if I can get a shot. Coming back through. It's so pretty. It's like iconic Florida right there. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um. So would you say that people that like were to buy the plugin, would you say that that's something that could like virtually replace them learning how to do Photoshop proficiently? I mean, obviously. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah, basically the way that it works is it's got a lot of actions programmed into the buttons okay. and then a lot of stuff that's like hidden in the menus um, and things that require, you know, multiple keyboard strokes and all yeah. kinds of stuff. It's all programmed in, in the buttons so you can just click basically through the edit. So now, I mean, I created it based off my own workflow. So when yeah. people started asking me how I create my photos, you know, now my response is, you know, use the pro panel because it yeah. literally has all of the things that I do in my editing workflow yep. programmed into buttons that you can just click through. So that's awesome. Yeah. So it, I mean, you could like give it to a monkey probably and they could probably <laughs> come create, out and be a professional photographer. Yeah. Like, edit, I mean, edit professionally, yeah. They could click, you know, and edit a picture with a few clicks, but I mean, I make it sound super simple. I have like videos on how to use it yeah. and kind of the yeah, intentions yeah. behind all the actions and how you would combine them and all that stuff. So it's, not it's not as simple as just like literally closing your eyes yeah, and clicking, yeah, but yeah. you it still helps have to a compose the shot. I mean, you have the yeah. whole and the the whole other side of photography where you're actually creating the shot, yeah. And then that just helps with streamlining the post process. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What um, what so what's your favorite like all time type of like composition that you would try to create? Like what I mean, I know I know you love like cityscapes and yep. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um. So would that be? I guess you would just immediately say cityscape no. is your number one or no landscapes would be my number one now okay um, my classic composition would be like a wide angle shot okay where i would find something interesting in the foreground something in the middle and then something in the background whether that's like mountains and sky um you know maybe something in the foreground could be rocks or you know trees or you know uh patterns in the sand or you know ice or something like that maybe in iceland or something so that's kind of my goal to create a three-dimensional looking yeah, shot yeah that's yeah. what i was gonna say like you're creating like the different dimensions of your yeah that's awesome um so this is the age-old question yeah <laughs> i know you probably already know what what's your what your your go-to 
camera like manufacturer company like what who who do you think is the top i mean it's very highly debated yeah what's, what's your your top? tried and true i think nikon okay yeah sony really does have a uh, upper hand in the mirrorless market yeah yeah and i have been using mirrorless for years and i've considered switching a couple times okay. but i've actually uh gotten to work with nikon i've used nikon my whole career yeah it's never done me wrong it's been very reliable and robust and you know dependable in all weather conditions so i would say nikon because i still use it to this day i haven't switched yet and i, yeah. I, I could have many times so i so i for me and like with my photography i mean obviously i'm not to your level but um for i actually started on like a d5200 a nikon okay. nice. um and so that was like my very first entry level uh crop sensor camera sure. that i started on um and then when i switched over to full frame um, I liked the portability and like the compactness of the mirrorless. And so that's what, cause I think it was before Canon and Nikon kind of hopped on board with manufacturing the mirrorless cameras. Mm -hmm. Um, so I actually went to Sony and then once you start building up your, your, uh, all the glass and yes. your lenses and everything, you're it's kind of hard to switch. Yeah. Cause yeah. you're, it's like, okay, let me drop five, 10, 15 grand on lenses and yeah, then now right. have to resell them. Obviously you're not going to get the same money back. Makes it a lot um, harder to switch. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's kind of where I, and I, I, I do think that like, like you said, Sony is kind of at the cutting edge of mirrorless, right. but, but Nikon and Canon are very much close. I mean, basically the, the way gap, I see yeah. it is like all cameras now are very capable. Oh yeah. yeah. They're all going to do a great job. Dude, your job freaking here. iPhone can yeah, do almost iPhone. as like, yeah. We could film this on an iPhone right yep, now yep, easily. Yep. <laughs> um, yeah. So it, it's, yeah, it's crazy. I mean, the, the, the differences between all of them are starting to very quickly kind of like blur. Yeah. The and, gaps. Yeah. Closed. Yeah. Um, and now it kind of just comes down to like the style. Like if, if you like, I mean, I, I don't know enough. I mean, you probably, but like if, if, uh, one camera manufacturer has better color and one of them is maybe has better dynamic range and yeah. you have like different, um, between the different manufacturers. So, um, but, uh, they're all, all right. pretty close. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Before we head back to the ramp, cause we're almost back here. Um, what has been like your favorite place to, cause I know you go to Iceland a lot and I know you said that's probably the most beautiful place you've been to. Uh -huh. Um, is that just hands down? Like Iceland is like your go-to. Yes. Uh, okay. <laughs> what, what's like your favorite thing? I, I mean, in I Iceland, don't, I don't think it's like, you can't really beat a volcano erupting and like right. being present and like being able to that's the document most that unique it, okay. aspect I think of Iceland because okay they're always different they're unpredictable if you're there while one goes off or right you know or during an active eruption i mean yeah. it's just, that's really special yeah if you can see it and capture it safely yeah um <laughs> but outside of volcanoes i think the highlands in iceland are very special as well okay um really really special in summer it's harder to access in winter because of snow the yeah. roads aren't maintained yeah but uh the highlands are amazing just otherworldly and yeah, I would say that, and then the ten thousand freaking waterfalls there. <laughs> I feel like Iceland is like, I mean, and, and you can see pictures, and it's just it's nothing. I, well, I've never personally been to Iceland, but I, I can assume that like even just going to the Grand Canyon, like how you see pictures, like wow, it's beautiful. But then like when you actually go, you're like, holy crap, like this oh, is. So I, I can only imagine person. like Iceland, like you look at a photograph of Iceland, and it literally looks otherworldly like it doesn't look like like how is this earth um but i can only imagine like being there and and seeing it in person you're like how is this even real um because i feel like it's just someone created it with ai and yeah like oh, fairy iceland. tale land looking ish non-earth looking <laughs> planet and like that's what iceland is and basically yeah, yeah. um yeah i i'm excited to hopefully get to go one day and, oh you got uh, to um definitely have plans to go but um, that's awesome. So how many how many times have you been to Iceland? Eighteen at this point. Eighteen, dang, yeah. that's a lot. Yeah. Yeah, it's probably too much. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I mean, to if honest, you're going, there's other places I should be exploring. I mean, if you're making money to go, like, you, uh, you I'm, can't... yeah, I mean, I'm there that much because of workshops. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Otherwise, so... I wouldn't have gone there eighteen times. <laughs> yeah, very true. Very true. Maybe well, I would have. I don't know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, um, I think we'll wrap it up. But thank you so much for coming out. It was yeah, of course. Awesome getting to show you the river. I know we 
got to hang out. I know before we started the recording, we got to see a little bit more of the river. Um, but, oh, look, the otters are here. Look, look, look. Oh, nice. Look at them. I'm going to get a video. You hear them munching. What are they, what are they snacking on? Um, to be honest, this is like terrible because I don't, I don't know the answer. Um, I, it's just really cute. You hear like I a perfect it. ending to the uh yeah you can just throw some iphone footage that's in. what i did <laughs> nice i just overlaid in the uh so then you can have because like these cameras obviously being fixed on us you can't see what we're looking at right oh he's coming for us <laughs> they're just i know they're so cute yeah I told you to get active this time of day. That current, man. I know. You need help? Uh, I think we're good. I'm trying to get. Suppose like, I could help. A little I guess. bit. You're good. I'm trying to get another shot before we. There's one coming up right here. So cool. You see the otters? Yeah. I know. I told you they get more active, like right around like sunrise and sunset. Well, sorry, that was like a very yeah. crappy. Uh, Outro. But yeah, thank you so much for coming <laughs> yeah, out. Though. Course, it was man. awesome hanging out, and yeah. I enjoy seeing you do all of your crazy adventures and all the traveling you do and all of your photography and just know that obviously i don't comment on every single thing that you do but um we definitely appreciate your work and, that would be and, creepy if you did bro. yeah <laughs> <laughs> no, fa fangirl and comment on everything yeah. <laughs> yeah uh but no thank you again for coming out it was yeah, awesome course. hanging out my and, pleasure uh, definitely thank look forward to the next me. time yeah yes sir all right cool